friends, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. If you've got a health challenge that you or a loved one may be dealing with and your physicians can't help you and you don't know where to go, we can help you out at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and order products right off the website. You can also call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. You can order products right off the telephone, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the phone. $25 is all it takes. It's a one-time $25 fee will get you in the business. And you can make some money selling longevity products and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. For you guys who want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Never any preservative, fragrance, filler, wax, emulsifying agents, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth treatment formulations. If you're dealing with dark spots or acne, or accelerated aging of the skin. If you want to uh, leverage the stupendously important power of vitamin C in its fat-soluble form and high concentrations for moisturization, for anti-aging, for sun protection, just incredible benefits that you get from vitamin C. But it's got to be fatty, and you got to have enough of it, and that's why I created my Truth Treatment products. Head over to truthtreatments.com. You can find out all about it. Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. All our products are designed to last months, many months, six months or so for our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, three or four months for our other products. You're not gonna, you can't get that kind of power from an ordinary skincare product, that's for sure. TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Okay, I'm hoping to get a guest on for the bottom of the hour. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Luke Adler, uh, author of a book called Born to Heal, a really interesting story about uh, his personal story, about the aspects of healing that we don't often hear about and certainly we don't talk about a lot. We, we mentioned it a, few, a little bit on this program, the secret aspects of health and wellness. I've often said that healing and health or the lack thereof is multi-dimensional and by that I mean spiritual, mental, emotional and physical and we spend a heck of a lot of time talking about the physical aspects of health but as a, somebody who's been in the healing profession now for over 30 years what I've noticed is very often there are mental, emotional and even spiritual aspects that are lurking behind that are hidden behind our uh, seemingly apparently physical health challenges what I've come to realize is that there's no such thing is a purely physical health challenge, that there's always some kind of spiritual, mental, and emotional component hiding behind. And Luke has written a really cool book uh, about his experiences with this very, very notion, SMEP, I call it, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. And hopefully we'll have Luke on at the bottom of the hour. Uh, I'm hoping to find that out here momentarily. Let's see. Uh, 
if he does come on, uh, if he does, well, I guess your calls here in our second segment. Otherwise, we'll just do do things as normal. Uh, okay, so we're talking carnitine. We're talking heart disease. One of the all-time great nutritional supplements for heart disease is carnitine, L-carnitine. There's different forms of carnitine. We'll be getting to that here in a little bit. Carnitine is not just important for the heart. It's important for the brain as well. It's important for the liver. It's important for a lot of things. But if you're dealing with cardiomyopathy, heart disease, in my opinion, L-carnitine is a must-have supplement. L-carnitine is an energy shuttle. We said yesterday how it shuttles fats into the little structures inside a cell where fat is burnt, the so-called mitochondria. And if you have heart disease, this is a supplement you want to know about. This is a supplement you want to be using. If you have heart disease, the chances are pretty good that if you go into the mainstream realm of cardiovascular medicine, you're going to get a drug that dumbs down your heart. This is a major medical, pharmacomedical strategy for dealing with heart disease. For over 200 years, this has been the way doctors have dealt with heart disease, dumbing down the heart. One of the first heart drugs was an herb called foxglove. Foxglove is a really beautiful purple plant. Got the Latin name digitalis, digitalis purpura, technically, purple digitalis. If you have cardiomyopathy, probably digitalis sounds familiar. Digitalis is a source of a medicine called digoxin, brand name lenoxin, and it works by blocking the heart, blocking electrolytes that go into the heart. Electrolytes run the heart, electrically run the heart. The heart's an electrical system, and it depends on electrolytes. Electrolytes, as you can tell from the name, are little electrical pieces of uh, minerals. Electrolytes, potassium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, are little chunks of electricity, and they drive the heart. They get fed into heart cells. Lenoxin works by blocking this movement. Does anybody out there think that's a good idea? Your heart and your heart cells work by um, the movement of electrical energy into the heart. That's the way it's supposed to work. So the pharmacomedical model and its brilliance has created a drug that stops that from happening. Who thinks that's a good idea? It's not a good idea. It's an awful idea. And maybe you need it temporarily. I don't even know if that's the case, but let's say you need it temporarily. The last thing you ever want to do is be on this kind of poisonous substance for life, and and people are on it for life. By blocking the electrical energy into a heart, you get a decrease in heart rate, you get an increase in blood pressure, and doctors think think that's a good idea because you get more blood to the tissues. And this is why every year Americans spend nearly $50 million on digoxin and lenoxin. Not good, not smart, bad medicine, bad science, in my humble opinion. Do you need drugs sometimes? Do you need to block the movement of electrolytes in the heart if your heart is diseased? Well, maybe, but not forever. The job of, uh, of a healthcare professional is to make sure you get off your drugs, not to get you on your drugs. The job of a healthcare professional should be to make sure you're not doing poison, not that you're on poison. Do you need it sometimes? Maybe. I'm not even sure if you need it sometimes. Let's say maybe, but you certainly don't need it for life. Another uh, awful type of drug that victims of heart disease and the victims of the pharmacomedical model, and I use that word advisedly, victims of the pharmacomedical model uh, will be subjected to, is a drug a class of drugs called beta blockers, metoprolol, propranolol. Atenolol, Olol. When you hear Olol at the end of a word, you've, or at the end of a drug name, you've got a beta blocker. Olol, metoprolol, propranolol, atenolol, and as the name implies, beta blockers act to block the heart. They block specifically the beta nervous system. The beta nervous system runs the heart, among other things in the body. The beta nervous system drives heart electricity. So guess what? The pharmacomedical model in its infinite wisdom has created a drug that blocks the beta nervous system, that blocks the heart, that shuts down or slows down electrical energy in the heart. Calcium channel blockers, diltiazem, Norvasc, verapamil, they do the same thing. This is lunacy. This is utter lunacy, and we just take it for granted that we got to be on our drugs. And I am a registered pharmacist, and I've studied these things for 30 years. It is lunacy, medical stupidity of the highest degree, in my humble opinion. Yes, I know you need them sometimes, by the way, so don't attack me on that. But to stay on these things. Oh. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Oh. 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We are here for you Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. We're here for your edification, your education, your information, and for your health benefit. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our longevity products, head over to my blog, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And for you guys who want to purchase our truth treatment products, head over to truthtreatments.com. I call the products treatments because they are treatments. They're not ordinary skincare, folks. Use only tiny amounts of these products. You dose yourself with my truth treatments, and that's how it should be. Skincare should be medicine, in my opinion, because you want your medicine to do something and you want your skincare to do something. And unfortunately, in the world of skincare, skincare products very rarely do something. Very, very rarely do anything. Very rarely. The only way you're going to get an effect from a skincare product is if you have vitamin C in there or vitamin A in there, and by effect, I mean a health benefit to the skin, is if you have vitamin C or vitamin A. There's no herbs that will give you a health benefit to the, to the tissue, to the skin, and there's no <laughs> ingredients in ordinary skincare products that will either. You've got to have nutrition on the skin, vitamins uh, in particular, and if you want to get into the cell, you've got to have vitamin C and vitamin A. Vitamin E is not getting into a cell. I like vitamin E for the skin. It's, it's neat for, it's good for healing the skin. It's got UV protection, but it isn't going into a cell. Only vitamin C and vitamin A will make it into skin cells where they will deliver maximum incredible benefits, really, for, for a topical ingredient. And uh, that's why I created my Truth Treatment products. Mega high doses of vitamin C as well as vitamin A in its retinol form. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com. Okay, got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We're talking heart disease, cardiovascular disease, and cardiovascular drugs. We said beta blockers and calcium channel blockers and digoxin, just dumb down the heart. Very poor medical, pharmacomedical strategy in my opinion, although perhaps necessary occasionally rare, uh, for short periods of time. Then you come to the statin drugs. Oh my God, what a scamola that is. Over 70% of heart disease patients are taking statin drugs. In fact, according to the Harvard, uh, Harvard Medical School, nearly 25%, one in four Americans, are on a statin drug. That is astounding. How could one in four people be taking a prescription drug? And even more shocking, according to the United States government, the, the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, in a document titled Prevalence of Cholesterol Treatment Eligibility, and medical use among adults. In this document, they state that nearly half of Americans whose cholesterol readings, whatever that means, puts them at higher risk of heart attacks are not taking medication to drive down that risk. And according to the CDC, this represents, quote, a clear opportunity. Yes, opportunity, this is what they call it. A clear opportunity, unquote, for more intensive efforts to advise patients to take medication. They want you on drugs. They see the fact that only 25% of Americans are on drugs. They see that as an opportunity to convince the other 75%. I mean, it's, it's not funny, but it is. It's tragic. Statin drugs are awful, although you wouldn't know it because they're gently awful. The average dose of a statin drug is, say, 40 milligrams a day, right? All right, so you're not going to, you might get some muscle weakness, you might get some liver problems, but it's not going to kill you. But if you were just to up the dose a little bit, you'd be dead. And I, by a little bit, I'd say maybe 10 times. If you take 500 milligrams or 400 or 500 milligrams. If you're not dead, you'd be very, very sick. This idea of taking drugs when we don't need them, it's a very recent phenomena, maybe the last 50 years. This idea of taking drugs for risk management. Nobody even talks about this. We don't even think about this. We're taking drugs not because we're sick, but just in case. Now, who do you think that benefits? To have people take drugs just in case, to reduce the risk. These are just in case medicines. We're taking them even when we're healthy. And we've only been doing this for a while. This is a, a relatively new strategy. Think about this. Millions and millions, many millions, tens of millions of Americans Healthy Americans are taking poisons to somehow keep themselves from getting sick just in case, and they're paying top dollar for it, either, 
either uh, via, uh, via their insurance companies and insurance premiums or directly. And when I say top dollar, I really mean top dollar. I'm talking hundreds of dollars a month for these things. And you know how much they cost to make? Pennies, literally pennies. The bottle costs more than the stuff inside it. The pill costs more than the medicine inside the pill. The, the, the excipients and the tableting agents and the marketing. Oh, the marketing. That's where most of the money goes. And we're paying for that. We're subsidizing that. And when I call these things poison, I am talking literally poison. If you take just a little bit more of your drug, say for a, a tenth of a teaspoonful a day of Zocor, you would be dead or at least very sick. You cannot poison the cholesterol. You cannot poison anything in the body, but the cholesterol production machinery, and it is biochemical machinery. The pro cholesterol production machinery is incredibly important, and cholesterol is incredibly important unspeakably important and I know I've said it a lot but I'll say it again if you wanted to poison a culture if you wanted to destroy the health of a culture a very good strategy would be to put everybody on a statin drug it is the only healthcare professional who could ever suggest or recommend that somebody took a statin drug is a healthcare professional who does not deeply understand pharmacology and the nature of it the idea of chronically poisoning any part of the body, especially the heart or the liver, in the case of statin drugs, in the name of our health or, or preventing disease in the name of just in case, is just unspeakably dumb. On the other hand, on the other hand, the health benefits, the heart health benefits, the overall benefits of carnitine. Now, they're not well known by doctors, maybe, but we've known about it for decades. I first heard about it in pharmacy school. Carnitine was first recognized for its ener uh, energizing benefits or its energizing heart benefits back in the 1930s. Health researchers in the early part of the 20th century were starting to get a little concerned because heart disease was, reach was becoming epidemic. Heart disease was really not, nobody really got heart disease until the early 1900s. It started to, heart disease rates started to increase and by 1920, 1930, 1940, it was becoming alarmingly concerning. Doctors were like, what the heck is going on here? Why are people dropping dead of heart attacks all of a sudden at such an epic rate? Somewhere around the 1940s or 1950s, heart disease became the leading cause of death. And it was relatively unknown. I wonder, looking back, hindsight being 2020, could it have been anything about the grains? Could it have been anything about the processing, uh, processed foods? Could it have anything to do with our fast-paced lifestyle? Could it have anything to do with uh, uh, fats? And, and uh, trans fats and hydrogenated fats? Could it have anything to do with government recommendations of eating? Well, I would say that's a very good possibility, but doctors remained mystified. And this is when the whole lipid idea, <laughs> excuse me, the whole lipid hypothesis became popular. And Dr. Ansel Keys came out with his idea, well, I think it has to do with the fact that we're eating so much fat, saturated fat. And, and uh, to this day, we're still, we still, uh, that's still the uh, conventional wisdom. Nobody ever thought about carnitine, even though in the 1930s, well, well we've got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. And take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us, friends. If you want to check out our longevity products, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Got blog posts as well as news stories and all the longevity products. Or you can call 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to be part of the Brightside Ben team. If you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel and Truth uh, Balm and Truth Serum and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, head to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so... We do have our guest, Luke Adler. Luke is an acupuncturist and an herbalist, and he is the author of a really cool book called Born to Heal. Luke has been uh, in the healing business for a couple of decades, apparently, according to the book here anyway. Actually, since he was a kid, we'll, we'll let Luke tell the story. It's a really cool book about uh, his experiences, as well as what I call the secret side of health, or the, the hidden side of health and healing. At least hidden, not hidden to everybody, but at least hidden to the modern medical model. Please welcome to the bright side, Luke Adler. How you doing, Luke? I'm doing great, Ben. Thank you so much for having me on. I've uh, been really looking forward to speaking with you this morning. 
I know is we've had a couple of back and forths here, but I'm very glad to have you have you on. So when I read Born to Heal, what I got was, uh, and this is something we talk about on this program a lot, is that there are aspects to healing that people aren't aware are there. And there's aspects to disease that people aren't aware th- that are there. Is that a good way of summing up your vision? Yeah, I think that's a, a great way to just put it put it forth in, you know, one or two sentences that, um, you know, typically when we think about healing, we're, we're thinking about it mostly physically, maybe a little bit emotionally, um, and and that there's a whole kind of another realm um, to look at it, a way to look at it that can be particularly helpful for um, certain issues, and for certain issues, um, you know, maybe it's not so helpful, but... Well, there's another realm. The idea that there's another realm is just a big idea in itself, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we can play. We can play in this whole other world. Aside from the fact that we can heal from this other world and, and we get sick from this other world, we can actually play and enjoy our lives from this other perspective. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's, that's what got me into, into healing and medicine as a profession. I was, um, you know, like you said, at a young age, had, a, had, a, had these experiences of my my kind of own um, awakening or dawning of consciousness in a certain way. And, and then, you know, from thir- 13 years old, I was looking at, well, how, you know, how do I share this with the world? How do I relate this to others? And, of course, there wasn't necessarily a, a, a place for me um, at, at that age. And then later, when I discovered Chinese medicine, you know, the, the first tenet of Chinese medicine is that all disease originates in one spirit or in the classical language all disease originates from the heart is that right i did not know that that that's the primary tenet of chinese medicine it's it's one of the primary tenets yeah it's interesting it acknowledges yeah it acknowledges that that the body really serves as a feedback um mechanism for the spirit so for what's happening in the spirit so you can you can yeah. determine what's happening spiritually by by using the body as feedback yeah, to a degree, absolutely. absolutely. That is very cool. Now, when they say the heart, they don't mean literally the heart. They mean the spiritual nature or the love nature. What do they mean by heart? Yeah, yeah, that each organ system has a spiritual function and that the heart is really the hub of all functions. And it does have a relationship to the physical heart in that, you know, if you're unhappy, if you're upset, if there's something you're not communicating to uh, someone in your life that is important to you, um, that it's going to affect your heart and that it can become a heart pain. It could impact the function of the heart. There could be stress to the heart. There could be um, stress to the vascular function of the heart. There could be, you know, uh, blood pressure issues if, if left unchecked. There could be cardiovascular issues, congestive heart failure, heart attack, stroke. You know, I'm, I'm kind of laying down the trajectory of uh, more chronic disease, but initially we have these experiences in our lives, and we, we don't, if, if they're left unresolved, they can become things that impact the physical body. Now, what do you make of the fact that heart disease is the number one killer in this country uh, and around the world, by the yeah. way? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the number one um, cause of death uh, in the world, yeah. Yeah. Um, what does that say about our culture, about the kind of culture we've created? Yeah, I mean, you, you look at, at the things we value. I mean, look at, look at mainstream media, wherever you get your news, um, the things that are being reported. And, you know, since I was a kid, it's all, it's all pretty negative-based, kind of yeah. gossip-based. Yeah, fear-based, yeah. Um, how how so, hard is it to not be in fear if you participate in, in the culture, watch the news or read the papers or talk, talk to people at the water cooler? How, how hard is it to not go into fear? I mean, I sometimes think if you took the Dalai Lama or you took, I don't know, some, some of these great beings that are alive in our time and you put them in an environment that was, that was very negative, that was um, late, you know, just embedded with fear, um, if you put them in that environment long enough, you know, how long would it take for that negativity to rub off? Even the Dalai like Lama. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think I think you know we become we become the energies we spend time with. So um, well, yeah, that, I, I, that's I, quite I, the I, condemnation I, on our society. I have to say. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's it's just like the the you know if I were to spend time in in these kind of environments, it wouldn't be long before I'd start to feel negative and think negative thoughts and 
Who knows? I think you, you raise an interesting point in your book, though. It's not so much the negative thoughts themselves as it is the suppression of those negative thoughts. Can you uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, that's really the, the kind of keystone teaching of the book is that, um, you know, I, I bring it back to, to us as individuals and say, it's not that someone else is making us unhealthy or that, you know, um, we're we're at the mercy of scenarios that, that cause dis-ease. It's that at some level we choose to not acknowledge how we feel and we choose to not express it. Um, and and that simple choice of like, ah, I don't want to feel my sadness today or I don't mm-hmm. want to, I don't, I really don't want to, I just, anger makes me uncomfortable. So I'm just, I'm just going to ignore it. Um, that that impacts our health physically. And um, that's the choice that we make every moment. And I'm not saying, hey, let's all go out and express every emotion. I mean, we need to be judicious and use discrimination, but it's, it's more about the willingness to feel the emotions and that every, every emotion, every feeling has a beginning, beginning a middle, and an end. Mm. There's mm. a sense sometimes with emotion that... They're going to stay feel, lousy. Yeah, and it's going to yeah. last forever, and I'm yeah. really out of control. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a time thing. Human beings have this weird thing about time. It seems sometimes when we're having an experience that we can't see the end of that experience. And I think that's very intimidating, especially when it comes to really agonizing, painful experiences like grief. I mean, who the heck wants to be in grief forever? But like you say, they have a beginning, middle, and end, right? Totally. Yeah, so you can, if you go through it, it'll end, and conceivably, and tell me what you think about this, that particular grief won't ever come back. Is that correct? Yeah, once you've dealt with it, it's, it's complete. It's done. It's, it's complete. That's, that's a really powerful idea. All right, so in the book, you, you link the physical body to a lot of these ideas via the organs, and I want to get to that when we come back from our break, particularly the heart, although we, we touched on that a little bit. But I want to talk about that in the lungs and the liver as well. We're talking to Luke Adler, author of Born to Heal, Acupuncturist and Herbalist. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back with more good information from Luke Adler right after this. Don't go away. All right, we are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're talking to Luke Adler about his book, Born to Heal. Luke is an acupuncturist and herbalist, as well as a healer and teacher with some interesting insight on the healing process. Hey, Luke, I noticed there's not a lot about acupuncture or herbalism in the book. What's up with that? Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I, um, I didn't write about acupuncture and her- herbalism intentionally because I really wanted to um, provide people a theory and approach and tools that they could have um, ownership of for themselves in their healing process. So I Love emphasized it. Empowering the, the individual. And, like empowering yeah. the individual. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I didn't want, you know, my goal is not to have people become dependent on me. I want them to mm. have the skills to heal themselves. So Beautiful. I've always said a true healer is somebody who puts himself out of the picture, who, who, mm-hmm. who makes himself uh, irrelevant. That's how it should be. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want people to remember who I am. I want them yeah. to remember who they yeah. are. You know? And the medical model is the opposite. You got to come in every month. You got to go to the pharmacist every every. You get a refill every month. You got to go every year for a checkup. I mean, it const it, it wants you embedded in it, or it wants to embed itself in you, which is kind of the opposite. So you know, I want to talk about this. Uh, I love the way you you pick these organs, these different body systems, uh, and how you link them to uh, spirituality. But I had a a couple of questions come to mind. First of all, the book's Born to Heal, titled Born to Heal. What exactly is health? What does it mean to be healthy? Hmm. I mean, it's a real subjective thing, right? What, what is it? If you go to the medical yeah. doctor, there's like an acceptable range in your blood labs. And, right. And then you go to, you go to someone like me or a naturopath, and you know, we say, oh, it should be up in this range. And, um so how do you define it? I mean, yeah, what would you, how would you, as a healer and somebody who has a book called Born to Heal, what, how would you define it? Well, my sense of health is really, I think it comes down to more of a, a spiritual, uh, I'd say emotional, um, and we'll throw physical in there, but it's a sense of happiness, a sense of satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I just had a, a dear friend of mine who, who died at 50 years old, perfect health. They did an autopsy on her and found actually nothing wrong. She just died. 
And I know plenty of uh, uh, ultra marathon runners and friends of mine who, are, who would be considered very healthy by certain standards. And, you know, if you check their labs, they're, they're actually pretty unhealthy. Their hormones are completely depleted. And so some people say health is longevity. Some people say, um, you know, it's, it's having this acceptable range of um, kind of blood markers, health markers. My sense is it's more of a sense, it's more of a feeling of happiness and satisfaction that you hmm. feel about your life. And as if you're not, if you're not happy, if you're not satisfied, if you're not content, if you can't pause for a few moments during your day and just feel gratitude, hmm. then there's some, there's some health issues. Contentment is a cool, plenty, con contentment's a cool word. Cause even if you have heart disease, but you're content, right? Even if you have yeah, heart disease, yeah. say, but you're right. So I think that sums I it mean, up really nicely. Yeah, because there's lots of people that, I mean, it's from the, from the Chinese perspective, from the Eastern perspective, sometimes disease is the lesson that the soul needs to grow. Mm, that's and hard. It's not about getting, yeah, it's not about getting rid of the disease. It's about coming to peace with it. And that, that's healing. That, to me, that would be healing. It would be, wow, can I come to peace within my heart, within my being, and, and go? It's like okay. healing disease is the booby prize. If you heal the if you heal the disease but you're not content, then what good did that do? You want to be Who you cares? want the contentment. Yeah, exactly. You want the contentment and the happiness. That's what we're looking for. At the end of the day, it's it, we're looking to be satisfied. So why can't the question is is why do we think we need something to be satisfied? Because satisfaction is an internal phenomenon, right? You can be it's satisfied. Another, yeah, you, you just hit the you just hit the nail on the head. It's just another to do. It's just another distraction. It's just another yeah. thing yeah. for the mind to fix. Yeah. What, what if you heal first? And then you heal the body yeah. later. Or my sense is when we get when we get the spirit content, the body's going to heal, have yeah. a way better chance to heal. Right. Even if it doesn't heal, it won't matter. But yes, you, your point is very well taken. You're, you'll yeah. be secreting healing hormones. You'll be activating the exactly. parasympathetic nervous system, etc. Exactly. All right. So we only have we only have a few minutes, and I really wanted to get to this uh, this the way you kind of divided the body up into. Uh, first of all, it seems was this arbitrary? There's only five systems that you picked. Right, you pick the heart, yeah. the spleen, the lungs, uh, the liver, and what was the other one? Uh, the kidneys, which are all very important. And I, t I don't know a lot about Chinese medicine, but I suspect that that has something to do with Chinese medicine. But I noticed you didn't pick right. the brain at all. Now, where does the brain fit into Chinese medicine? The brain is part of; it's distinct, but it's also part of the kidney system. Uh -huh. The kidneys, the kidneys and the brain are, are linked in terms of the, the constitutional strength um, and and foundation of the body's health and the the brain i mean like the ancient texts don't have a a lot to say out of the brain other than it's kind of like this unknown organ what does it really do um and of course modern day chinese medicine is, has integrated western views around okay the brain kind of mediates the functions of all other systems and the nervous system and, um but in the classical text there there wasn't the brain was lumped in with the kidneys um, as, as part of this constitutional ability to just endure and have stamina and mm. reproduce and um, that, that okay. functionality. All right, so we only have a couple more minutes, so I don't mean to, to rush you through, but yep. there's, this is just no so problem. fascinating. The kidneys, kidney disease is another one of those epidemics, right? It's like crazy how many people are on dialysis or have kidney cancer or just general yep. kidney disease. Talk, talk, let's talk a little bit about the kidneys. As a pharmacist and as a healthcare professional, I think of excretion, and I think of filtering, the, uh, filtering the blood. So tell me, what, what is your take as, a, as an acupuncturist or herbalist or as a, as a spiritual healer, really? Yeah, um... It's it's very much linked to the heart, and I mean, as you know, the you know the number one cause of death is heart disease. But the number one chief complaint in America is back pain, and in Chinese medicine, we link back pain to the kidneys, not just in terms of the location, but in terms of when the kidneys are worn down, when the sex hormones and adrenal hormones are worn down, um, people tend to get back pain and knee pain. They're just their whole systems are worn down, and the kidneys being really the source of constitutional strength from the Chinese medicine perspective, um, start to, the, the body starts to reveal this, this, or give way to this notion of not being able to hold itself up. And so you have this sciatica or back pain or pelvic pain or menstrual pain or, or something mm. in that region that we would correlate with the kidney system. And, and, and I've chosen the organs because they're kind of general groupings of larger systems in, in the Chinese system. But we really see the kidneys as being 
this organ that allows you to keep pushing forward, allows you to have willpower, allows you mm. to endure. And that when we overdo it, when we drink too much caffeine and sugar and, and work, 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 the kidneys get worn down. We get sexual dysfunction issues, menstrual issues, um, back pain, knee pain, et cetera, and so on, hormonal issues. And then, like, the, the epidemic in America is this is arguable from an allopathic to an uh, alternative view is, um, you know, adrenal exhaustion or adrenal fatigue or just these issues of just being tired or autoimmune disease. And I can't like deal. How about I can't deal? It's just too much. I cannot yeah, deal with this. So the adrenals, uh, you're, you're linking the kidneys, the adrenals to the renals. The kidneys and the adrenals are together. Is that what yeah. you're saying? And they do. Functionally, they are. That makes sense. Um, you know, Luke, I, there's just so much I wanted to talk about here. Uh, the spleen, nutrition, the liver, and we're just flat out out of time. Your book is <laughs> your, uh, the book is Born to Heal. It's, I encourage everybody to, to get this book. It's uh, Anybody who's dealing with health issues to get this book, anybody could read this. It's really a very fascinating read and also very easy. Easy to read. What's your website, Luke? Uh, LukeAdlerHealing.com. LukeAdlerHealing.com. And you live in Oregon, right? Yeah, Eugene, Oregon. Do, do you see people? Do you see clients? Yeah, I see. I see patients. I'm going to start seeing someone in 20, 30 minutes, and um, I do Skype sessions and verbal consults, and you know, and, all kinds. And of all off your website, LukeAdlerHealing.com. People can get can reach you. Okay, so uh, got about thirty seconds here. Just give sum it all up. Say, tell tell us one thing to take home. One thing to take home, I would say, is um, be be willing today to take a pause, take a breath, feel what you're feeling, and then just after you do that, or in the middle of that, just think about one thing that you're grateful for, and it's going to be um, really good for your health. It's going to make you feel good. Awesome. I love it, Luke. The book is uh, Born to Heal. Thank you so much, Luke, and I'm glad you, we finally got together here. Uh, and uh, enjoy your day, and, and thanks for the wisdom. I really appreciate it. Take care, buddy. Yeah. All right. The book is Born to Heal. Uh, heal yourself and heal the world. Luke Adler, LukeAdlerHealing.com. If you're in Oregon, you might want to might want to have a visit with him. But he also says he does Skype, Skype as well. All right. If you're interested in checking out our True Skin Health products, TruthTreatments.com, make sure you take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel. And I'd love to have you on the Bright Side Ben team. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Start a longevity business today and help me and my mission. We can do this together. We can educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have yourselves a beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.